Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So today's sewing project is a little bit different because it is a matching pajama set and I had so much fun putting this one together. I am going to be working with one of my favorite sewing patterns. This is the Carolyn pajama pattern from Closet Core Patterns and quite a few of you said you were interested in seeing a full sew along for this pattern. So that is what I'm going to be doing in today's video. So let me show you how this set turned out. So I'm going to be making the long sleeved long pants view that has the piping and the cuffs, which I just think is so cute. And for my project, I used this Rifle Paper Company striped floral cotton. And I really loved that this fabric gave me an opportunity to play with the pattern placement. And so that was a lot of fun to work with. And I'll go over that as I show you the full process. But here is the pajama top. It has an adorable collar with piping and then this little pocket here and then also the piping on the cuffs, which I think is a, so cute. And then here are the matching pajama bottoms. And I recommend if you are new to this type of project that you start with the pajama bottoms because they are a lot easier to sew, but they will give you practice with the piping techniques. So it's a good place to start. And one thing I like about these pajama pants is that they have a few more details than a lot of patterns, like the side pockets here, as well as the cuffs. And the cut is really nice as well. I think this is my third full time sewing through this pattern pattern and I finally feel like I've gotten the collar to look really good so I'm excited that I'm sharing it with you on a sew through where I actually feel like the collar looks good so I hope you guys enjoy watching the whole process and let's go ahead and get started. So starting out with the pajama pants, I'm using this beautiful cotton fabric from Rifle Paper Company, and I've pre-washed and dried it. I love the striped floral elements of this fabric, so I've arranged my pattern pieces to complement the floral stripe. So you can see here that the front and back pieces are laying out so that the stripes go up and down, but for the waistband and the cuffs, I've laid it out so that the stripes go horizontally, and those pieces are almost entirely made up of the floral stripe. So I'm just going to cut out all of my pattern pieces. And with all of those pieces cut out, here's a quick look at all of the different elements. I have the front and back pant pieces, then the front and back cuff pieces, there's two of each of these, then the waistband, and then the pocket pieces. And now I'm ready to get started sewing this together. I'm going to start by attaching the pockets to the front of the pant legs. And I really love the way that these pockets are designed and constructed. So let me show you how I put them together. So here's what the pocket piece looks like. It matches up to the front of the pant leg piece. So I'm going to start by aligning these together along that slanted line with the right sides together. Then I'm just going to pin this in place and sew across this edge with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. This is optional, but I did go ahead and finish these seams using my serger. And then I'm going to open the seam out and push the seam allowance towards the pocket edge so that I can understitch this edge. Then I'll just sew across the pocket edge, making sure that that seam allowance is caught underneath my stitching. And this will make everything look a lot cleaner once it's turned towards the inside. So 
So here's what we're left with. And you might be wondering, like I was the first time I made this pattern, how is this actually going to turn into a pocket? It is about to start taking shape though. So I'm just going to quickly press that seam that I sewed to make sure everything looks really clean. And then I'm going to fold the pocket piece in half with the right sides together along the lower edge. Then I can go ahead and sew across this lower edge to form the pocket bag. I'm going to sew this together with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and then use my serger to finish the edge because this will be exposed on the inside of the pajamas. And then if I fold this to the inside along that seam that we previously sewed, you can see how the top part of the pocket becomes part of the actual pajama pants and we're left with this pocket opening and that open edge will be caught in the side seam. And here's what it looks like on the inside. So I'm going to repeat this on the other side and then I can go ahead and sew these seams. Now I do make a few modifications to the sewing instructions and I just kind of sew this with my own method. So instead of basting this to the sides here, I've just pinned it in place because I find that it stays pretty well and it will be sewn together in a few minutes anyway. So I've just pinned the sides here, but you can see how that pocket has come together. These pajama pants are designed to have a faux fly, which is a really nice detail. So I'm going to work on that next. So I'm placing the front pieces together with the right sides together along the front rise. And I'm going to go ahead and pin my stitching line here. So I'm going to start by sewing from the top of the faux fly extension, and I'm going to start by using basting stitches. But once I get to the end of the extension, which I've just marked with that pin there, I'm going to switch over to a regular stitch length and continue sewing the curve. So it seems complicated, but it's really just a simple curve that I'm sewing here. And once I've sewn that seam, I'm going to take my scissors and clip into the seam allowance right below the faux fly extension. Then I'm going to trim the seam allowance away to a one quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to use zigzag stitches to finish this lower edge here, but I actually go back later and replace this with some serging because it ended up working a little bit better. But I just thought I'd show you both of the ways that I did it here. So next I'm moving over to my serger and using my serger to finish the edges on the extension. And as I was finishing this lower edge with the serger here, I realized that it was actually pretty easy just to flatten the curve out and use the serger to finish the entire edge. And I just thought that looked a little bit more neat. And with all of that done, here's what I am left with. So I'm going to go ahead and use my iron and press the faux fly extension over to the right side of the pajama pants. And then I can work on some top stitching. So next I'm just going to pin this in place and I'm going to pin in the line that I'm going to do my top stitching. So I'm going to be sewing two rows of top stitching following the curve of the faux fly extension just to add a nice detail to the front of the pajama pants. So I'm just marking this with my pins, but you could definitely draw this in place if you felt more comfortable with that. And I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and sew two rows of top stitching, making sure that I'm sewing through all layers.
So that's all the assembly for the front pieces done. So now I can go ahead and sew the back rise of the pants. So I'm going to put the back pieces together with the right sides together and sew these together along the back curve using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and using my serger to finish the edge. I went ahead and pressed that seam to one side and now I can put the front and back pieces together. So this is where the pants really start to take shape. So I'm going to pin these together with the right sides together along the outer side seams. Then I can just sew these seams. They're very easy straight seams. I'm just making sure to catch those pocket pieces in the side seam like I talked about earlier. So I'm going to pin these in place and go ahead and sew these seams. They are 5 eighths of an inch seam allowances and I'm using my serger to finish the edge. I pressed those seams towards the back and now I can go ahead and sew the inseam. I'm just making sure to match this up at the front and back rise seams, pinning that in place and matching that together. And then I am going to pin both of the pant legs together and sew all of this as one seam, just pivoting when I reach the front and back rise seams. So that's all of the main construction for the pajama pants done. And now I can move on to the waistband. So I'm going to give my waistband pieces a quick press. I really love how this floral stripe looks with the waistband pieces. So I'm just making sure that the flowers are going the same direction. And then I'm going to match this up with the right sides together and sew these two pieces together along the side seams. I'm using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance here, but I do not have to finish the edges because this will all be turned towards the interior and you won't see any of the raw edges. Next, I'm just going to press these seams open so that this won't be too bulky at the side seams. Now I'm going to work with the lower edge of the waistband and I'm going to turn this under one half of an inch and just press this in place. Mm -hmm. 
So now I'm ready to attach the waistband to the pajama bottoms. So I'm going to match this up at the side seams, matching the side seam of the waistband to the side seam of the pajama bottoms. And I'm matching this up along that raw edge, not the edge that we just folded under one half of an inch. So I'm going to pin all the way around and then sew this down with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And now I can take my scissors and trim away any of the excess seam allowance, again, to keep this from being too bulky at the waistband. I gave that seam a quick press and then I could go ahead and turn the waistband towards the inside of the pajama pants. So I'm going to fold that folded edge down and just make sure that this is overlapping that seam that we just sewed so that you don't see that stitching. Then I'm going to go all the way around folding and pressing this in place. Now I can pin all the way around the waistband, but I am going to leave a gap right at the back seam of about three inches so that I can insert some elastic in just a minute. So now I can sew all the way around my waistband except for where I'm leaving that gap and I'm doing my best to sew right in the stitching line from the seam attaching the waistband to the lower part of the pants but making sure that I'm sewing through all of my layers here. So now it's time to add the elastic. So I've cut a piece of one and a half inch elastic that fits comfortably around my waist and follows the measurements from the pattern. And I'm just going to use a safety pin to thread this all the way through the waistband. I'm going to make sure that the elastic isn't twisted and then I will overlap the ends and then just sew these together. I'm going to sew in a little rectangle shape and then sew an X across the middle just so that everything stays in place and doesn't get twisted while I'm wearing the pajamas. So now I can just pull on the waistband so that the elastic falls into place and then I can sew the gap close that we left earlier so now everything is contained neatly inside the waistband and it's elasticated. And to keep things extra secure at the waistband, I'm going to continue that top stitching that we did on the faux fly up into the elastic. So just following that stitching line and sewing two straight lines up through the elastic. So that is the top part of the pajama pants done, and now we need to work on the cuffs. So I'm going to take the two cuff pieces, the front and back, and I'm just going to work with one of the pant legs here. So I'm going to match these up, making sure that the floral pattern is consistent once again, and I'm going to match these up along the side seams with the right sides together and sew these seams in place. This is done in pretty much the same way as the waistband, so I don't have to finish these seams because everything will be encased on the inside. I'm going to press these seams open and for this I'm using this tiny ironing board which works really well for this type of detailed pressing and after I've done that I'm just going to go ahead and turn the lower edge under the seam allowance here so this is 5 eighths of an inch and this is pretty much the same thing that I did on the waistband I'm just going to press this all the way around the lower edge of the cuff. And now I can just fold these edges to meet and I'm going to press this along what is now the lower edge of the cuff. Mm -hmm. 
So now it's time to add the piping to the bottom of the pant legs. And I'm using store-bought because like Ina Garten says, store-bought is fine. So I'm just going to use this white piping that I bought from Joanne Fabrics. And I'm going to start by pinning this to the lower part of the pant leg. Now the store-bought piping does not have a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just making sure to line this up with a 5 eighths of an inch distance from the lower part of the pant leg. And I'm going to pin this all the way around the lower part of the pant leg. And then once I come to the end, I'm going to trim my piping so that I have just a little bit of excess on either side. And then using my seam ripper, I'm going to remove some of the stitches from either end of the piping so that I can allow this to overlap and look really neat. So on one side, I'm going to trim the actual cording so that the pieces of cording will bump up against each other and there won't be a bump. And then on the other side, I'm just going to trim this to make sure that everything fits together nicely. Then I can fold over the edge on the side of the piping where I trimmed the actual cording and then fold this over the other side of the piping so that everything is encased and looks super neat. And now I can just pin this in place and I'm ready to sew the piping down. So I know that looks like a long, complicated process, but it's actually pretty simple once you get the hang of it. So now I'm just going to sew this in place on my sewing machine and I'm switching over to a zipper foot so that I can get really close to the piping with my stitching. So now the piping is attached and it's on to what I think is the fun part of this project. I'm going to add the cuff to the bottom of the pant leg. So I'm going to open this cuff out so that the raw edge can match up with the lower edge of the pant leg and that piping will be sandwiched in between. So the right sides are together here and that folded edge is facing up. So I'm just going to match this together all the way around that raw edge and then sew this down all the way around backstitching on the ends and making sure that everything is really secure. I like to sew on the side where I can see the stitching where I attach the piping and then sew just slightly inside of that line so that that line doesn't show on the outside of the project. And again, I'm using my zipper foot to do this so that I can get as close to the piping as possible. And now the moment of truth, I can turn this towards the right side and see how my piping looks and it looks pretty good. So we have now made it to the last step of the pajama pants. So I'm going to fold this cuff along that fold line that we pressed in place earlier, and then make sure that that folded edge is overlapping the seam allowance on the inside. Then I can pin this all the way around so that all of the raw edges are encased on the inside of the cuff, just like we did on the waistband earlier. Then I'll take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch all the way around, making sure that everything is caught on the inside so that all of those raw edges are neatly encased. I'm going to use the zipper foot here just because I like that it allows me to get a little bit closer to the piping and I'm just going to sew all the way around this edge. So that is the last step for the pajama bottoms. So let's move on to the pajama shirt next. Now there are a lot of techniques with this top that are the same as the techniques we use to make the pajama pants. So I will go over some of it more quickly, but I'll make sure to spend a lot of time on the more detailed parts of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out all of my pattern pieces. And again, I've aligned some of the pieces just different ways to go along with the pattern of my fabric and make sure that the stripes are placed the way I want them to be. I wanted the collar pieces to have more of the floral elements on them. So I made sure to arrange the pattern pieces that way. And then again, the cuffs, I wanted to have the floral elements just like I did on the pajama bottoms. So I arranged those that way as well. I did want to quickly mention that I decided not to use interfacing for this project because my fabric is already pretty stiff and I just don't find interfacing to be comfortable, especially in pajamas. But if you're using a lighter fabric, I would definitely consider it. Now there are quite a few pattern pieces involved with this project, so let's go over all of them. The first one is the back piece, and then there are the two front pieces, as well as the front facing, and then the collar pieces, two for the under collar, and then the top collar is cut on the fold. 
Then we also have the two pocket pieces. One is the lower pocket and one is the pocket cuff, the sleeve pieces, and then the sleeve cuffs. So let's get started sewing this pajama shirt. I'm going to start by assembling the pocket. And the first thing I need to do here is to attach some piping. So I'm going to pin my piping to the lower pocket and I'm attaching this just in the same way I did on the cuffs for the pajama pants. So I'm just going to sew this in place at a five eighths of an inch distance from the edge with my zipper foot. And now I can go ahead and add the pocket cuff. So I'm just going to place these pieces together with the right sides together and sew this together on the other side of that sewing line using my zipper foot, just making sure that none of that stitching will show when I turn this towards the right side. So this pocket is already looking pretty cute, but I'm going to give it a quick press. And then I'm going to turn the upper part of the pocket cuff up one half of an inch, just like we did on some of the other steps in the pajama pants and press that down. Then I'm going to fold this over right side to right side, folding it over on itself. And I'm going to pin these sides together. Then I'm going to sew both of these short sides together with a five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And now I can take this to the serger and I'm going to use this to finish all of the raw edges of the pocket. So here's what I'm now left with. And I went ahead and trimmed the top corners using my serger. You could definitely do that with scissors. It just seemed like fun to me. So now I'm turning that cuff towards the right side and then I can fold all of my lower edges in by five eighths of an inch and press them down. I'm going to also fold the corners in on themselves just to make sure that they don't poke out of the edges once I attach this to the shirt and just make sure that everything looks really clean. So now I'm just going to top stitch across the pocket cuff and I probably should have had my zipper foot in place for this, but I just used the regular presser foot and it worked okay. So now I can go ahead and attach the pocket to the front of the shirt and I'm just following the markings from the pattern and pinning this in place. Then I'll top stitch all the way around all three edges, making sure to really backstitch securely at either end. Now I did want to quickly mention that I noticed as I was reading the pattern instructions that some of the sizes do have bust darts. So if you notice that your size has those darts, just make sure to sew those before adding your pocket. So the pocket is now attached and now I can go ahead and sew the shoulder seams for the shirt. So I'm just going to place the front pieces against the back piece with the right sides together at the shoulder seams and sew these in place with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then use my serger to finish the edge. And before I press these seams, I'm going to add some stay stitching around the neckline. This is just like long basting stitches to keep the neckline from stretching out. And I want to make sure I do this before I press it because that could cause the fabric to stretch. So I'm going to set the shirt aside for a few minutes and work on the collar next. So starting with the under collar pieces, I'm going to pin these together with the right sides together along that back seam and sew the seam in place with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And moving on next to the top collar, I'm going to run stay stitching along the lower edge between the two notches that are cut in the pattern. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and pin my piping around the outer edge of the collar. Again, five eighths of an inch from the edge. And I'm going to use my scissors to clip at the curves just to make sure that it goes really cleanly around the curves of the collar and everything looks really nice. And for the piping, I'm going to start and stop sewing at the circle markings that are marked on the pattern piece. It's specifically marked and indicated so you can just look for that on your pattern piece. I'll start by sewing that stay stitching so that the collar doesn't stretch and will fit nicely to the neck edge and then I will switch over to my zipper foot and sew the piping in place.
The next step is to clip into this edge 5 eighths of an inch where the shoulder seam markings are marked on the collar piece and then to clip up into the seam allowance all through this curve. This is going to allow me to really neatly turn it towards the inside along that stay stitching line and it's going to help the inside of the pajamas to look really nice later. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this central part of the collar towards the inside and press it in place. And once that is pressed in place, I can move over to the under collar and press this back seam open so that this doesn't stick out once I've placed the two pieces together. And then I'm ready to attach the two collar pieces together. So I'm going to line these up with the right sides together and pin them together. I'm going to sew along that stitching line where I attach the piping. And again, just like I did on all of the other places that I've attached piping, I will sew slightly to the inside of that line and use my zipper foot to sew this in place. Now taking my scissors, I'm going to trim away the excess seam allowance and clip into the seam allowance, not cutting the stitching at the curves so that this looks really neat when it's turned toward the right side. Then I can turn the collar right side out and give it a quick press. So now it's time to attach the collar to the shirt and I'm going to start by working with just the under collar. Now the collar has markings for the shoulder seams so that you can match those markings to the shoulder seams. So I'm starting with one of those markings and just matching that up and pinning this in place and then I'll pin the collar all the way around the neckline, just pinning this in place and then sew this down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Again, just working with the under collar and the shirt. Now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to clip into the seam allowance right where those shoulder seams are. And then I'll just trim away the seam allowance at the back of the shirt between the two shoulder seams, making sure not to cut into my stitching line. And now remember that middle part of the top collar that we folded earlier, we're going to take that edge and overlap it over the seam allowance here. But first I'm just going to press that seam allowance up so that it stays in place. And then I can pull this edge over that seam and pin this down. Then I'm just going to top stitch this in place in between those two shoulder seams. And in a minute we'll work with those other edges. And working with the front ends of the collar that are on the front of the shirt, I'm just going to baste the lower collar to the upper collar at both of these ends so that these stay in place and those edges will be finished when we add the facing later on. So I'm going to start by doing my top stitching and then I'll just baste those collar edges together. So now it's time to work on the front facing, which will also add this lower part of the collar. You can see here, I've done it on one side and I'm going to repeat all of the steps on the other side. So first I'm going to add my piping to the facing and it's marked on this pattern piece where the piping should begin. So I'm going to start my piping there, but make sure that I have a little bit of extra so that I can make sure that the piping matches up nicely once this joins to the collar. So I'm going to pin my piping in place just in the same way that I did for all of the other parts of this project, clipping the curve so that the piping goes neatly around the curve and pin this in place five eighths of an inch away from the edge. Then I'll take this over to the sewing machine and sew it down using my zipper foot. Now 
Now the pattern instructions say to finish the edge of the facing with a double hem. I thought that would be a little bit bulky with my fabric, so I just decided to use the serger and I finished the outer and upper edges of the facing using the serger. So now I was ready to attach the facing to the pajamas, so I went ahead and pinned this together with the right sides together, matching up any markings and pinned this in place. Now, when I got to where the piping meets at the collar, I went ahead and folded that extended edge of the piping so that it creates a corner here. And I made sure that those were matching exactly together before I continued to pin along the neckline with the facing. And I feel like this worked really well. And it was also easy to check before I sewed it to make sure that that piping was matching up. This method has worked the best for me for getting that piping really nice and clean. And then here I'm pinning the facing to that edge where the collars were basted together. So this is how this will all be finished and turned toward the inside here in just a minute. So I'm just going to pin all the way up to the shoulder seam and then I can go ahead and sew this down on the sewing machine, making sure that I'm sewing right to the inside of that piping stitching line like before. And I'm also quickly checking to make sure that that piping looks good. So again, I'm using my zipper foot to sew this in place just to make sure that everything looks really clean and I'm going to sew this down with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm also going to use my serger to finish this edge, even though it will be turned towards the inside. I just want to make sure that nothing is going to get unraveled in the wash. And now the moment of truth, I'm going to turn this toward the right side and see how my piping looks. And I was really, really happy with how it looked where it met at the corner here. And so I'm just going to give the front of this a quick press. And then one more final step to finish up the facing where the facing meets the shoulder seam here. I'm going to fold this edge around the shoulder seam and pin this in place. And then I'm just going to top stitch this on the outside of the shirt right over the shoulder seam line. And this will make sure that everything stays nicely together. I won't worry about the facing popping out or coming undone and it will keep everything nice and clean on the inside. So with the collar done, we are in the home stretch of this project and the rest of it is a lot more simple. So next I'm just going to add e-stitching to the top of the sleeves. And I'm also going to go ahead and assemble the cuffs by folding these together with the right sides together and sewing them together along the side seam. These sleeves are set in flat, which I hadn't done in a while, and it was kind of fun to experiment with. And the thing that I found really effective to keep me from getting puckers in the shoulder of the sleeve was to pull the e-stitching up, just like I was gathering this into a puffy sleeve, and then to push the e-stitching back out and make sure that there were no actual puckers in it. And somehow this seemed to help everything to stay really clean. So I just pinned the edges and the center point and then adjusted all of my e-stitching till it was basically non-existent and pinned this in place. And I found that I got a really smooth application of my sleeve to the armhole here. I was really, really happy with it. So I'm just going to sew this in with a five eighths of an inch seam allowance and use my serger to finish the edge. I gave this seam a quick press and then I could sew the side seam. So I'm just going to fold this together with the right sides together and match that sleeve seam so that it's really accurately matched together. And I'll start by pinning right at that seam and then pin down the front side of the shirt and the side of the sleeve. And then I'll sew all of this in place as one seam pivoting at the corner here, sewing this together with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and using the serger to finish the edge. I 
I gave that seam a quick press and now I could add the piping and the cuffs to the sleeve edges. I'm going to speed through this pretty quickly here because it is just the same process that I followed for the pant legs. So if you want more detail, I would just watch that section of the video. It is really the exact same process here. So now working on the hem of the shirt, the first thing I'm going to do is finish off the edges of the facing here at the bottom corners. So I'm going to start by folding that facing out toward the outside with the right sides together, and then I'll pin this in place and sew this down with a one half of an inch seam allowance on both sides. Next, I'm going to trim away the seam allowance just at these edges, making sure not to cut any further, and then I'll turn the facings toward the inside and press the corners. So now for the actual hem of the shirt, this is meant to be folded under a quarter of an inch twice. So the way I'm doing this is starting by just folding up the raw edge one half of an inch, and then I'll fold that edge in on itself towards the inside to make that, that one a quarter inch narrow hem. And now I'm just going to sew my hem down. I'm doing slightly less than a one quarter inch seam allowance here, just making sure that everything is caught in the stitching. And I'm sewing all the way across the lower hem of the shirt, making sure to backstitch at each end. So now all that was left to do was to add the buttons and buttonholes. So I'm using my very old dilapidated button guide from the pattern and marking my buttonhole placement. And then I'll take this over to the sewing machine and sew these in place. And then I'm just going to overlap the front edges and mark all of my button placement and sew those on by hand. Once I had sewn all of the buttons in place, this project was done and I was so happy with the way it turned out. I think because there are so many steps to this project that it left me feeling especially accomplished. So I hope if this is a pattern that you've been wanting to try, but you've been a little bit intimidated by it, that this video helps give you the confidence to try it yourself and just take it one step at a time. It is a little bit of a complicated project, but I think it's definitely worth it for the final result. Thank you. 
I was so happy with how this pajama set turned out. I really liked the way that the fabric placement ended up looking with the floral stripes. I was a little bit concerned that it wouldn't work because of how wide the stripes are, but I really like the final result and I just think they're really cute. So I'm happy to have these in my pajama collection. I'm also so happy that I finally feel like I got the piping to look good on the collar. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that if this is a pattern that you're interested in sewing that you found it helpful just to see somebody sew through the whole process. And I will be back very soon with my coat project video. I decided to delay that by one week just to give myself a little bit more time because it is a pattern that made me pretty nervous, but I will be back very soon to share that one with you. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time here today. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye.